Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. Here we go. In three, two, one. Jeez! Having any fun yet? Your talent is next level. Oh, thank you. You inhabit a goose on a level that you know, I mean, physically, when I look at you, you don't really look alike. Yeah. But the it was like haunting in a way. So oh, cool. how much did you sort of channel, study Anthony Edwards' performance? Was that a huge aspect of getting into this character? I, th I think I, I mean, I remembered enough of, of having seen the film to, to understand what, you know, what Anthony did with it and what Goose kind of, what that feeling was like and kind of the, the character, you know, the role that he played in it. And then with Rooster, you know, he, he's had a totally different life experience than, you know, than, than, than Goose had. And so I was trying to, you know, kind of understand, uh, you know, I have a lot of buddies in the military and, you know, their parents that, you know, were in the military and the reason why they followed in their, their parents' footsteps and what it meant for them to kind of, you know, carry on that legacy. So, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm so glad you, you thought that it was kind of, you know, in the mix. I actually went back to the original because I couldn't remember how old you were uh -huh. in that part yeah. and he was old enough to remember so the fact that you do come full circle and you do yeah. sing that song and i know you play you actually play the piano yeah. um so you as the character do you say to yourself i remember that i remember my dad that was our defining moment that was my defining moment of my dad and that's why you're carrying it forward i mean i th i think with you know probably how it would have went i mean me personally i couldn't even tell you what my First memory, so I don't really know, but I but I just know how these things go when somebody in the military uh, pass away. Um, the guys that he works with um, really make a point to be a part of that kid's you know family for forever. And so as he would get older, that's when these guys would share you know you know some stories with him. And and so I you know I, and I love that they do that. That it means a lot to them when um, you know to to make sure that they are a part of that that you know that family's life. Uh, I love hearing the story that the first time you got on set with Tom, you started the Maverick chant. You were like, Maverick, yeah. Yeah. Maverick. Yeah, and yeah. I've seen a couple interviews you do with Tom, and I would be, like, just so nervous. And uh -huh. you seemed so cool with him. <laughs> yeah. And that chemistry really comes off on screen. Can yeah. you talk about creating that chemistry with Tom? Because I think initially maybe you sort of weren't sure about taking the role, and he kind of convinced you. Well, I was, I just, I wasn't. Yeah, to be fair, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't sure. I didn't know. I had never been a part of something this that I knew was going to be this big and I that's not something that I take lightly. I think if you're going to be a part of something, you should really think uh think about all aspects of it. But but no, with as far as Tom goes and the camaraderie, I think he, I just he's just so great, man. He really is uh so disarming and he he really did not to make a pun, but you know, he took me under his wing and he told me he said anything you need in your life, uh, anything, anything you ever want to ask, he's like, just give me a call. And that's, you know, that's been true personally and professionally. He's, you know, he's always been there for me. So why did you start the Maverick chant? Just to sort of break the ice? Yeah, dude, I would do that all the time. Um, because I would carry a Bluetooth speaker. And so in, <laughs> in scenes that were, if I felt like the tension was kind of high in this, I, I literally would play something from the Top Gun soundtrack just to, just to, you know, loosen it up a but little bit. you're the bit. DJ. You're the DJ of the set. Yeah, I'm sure it got old at some point, but I, I just, I, I try and keep it loose if I can. That could have been your call sign, but you actually chose Rooster. I did, yeah. Yeah. Why specifically? Just sort of homage? Uh, yeah, I mean, we we list, we looked at hundreds, if not thousands of call signs. There was, an, a rich, there was another call sign that was in the script that I thought, I thought, you know, if I can, if I can beat it, if I can find something else and... You know, the fact that it's in the Bird family, I thought that was a nice kind of wink without being too on the nose. And so I'm glad, I'm glad it fits. Uh, this film has so many great mantras. The, my favorite and one of my favorite moments in the film, and I'm not going to spoil it, is don't, I don't think, just do. Right, do you yeah. have a mantra that you live by? I don't know, man. I, I think it's just there's something that my parents kind of instilled in me at a young age is just, you know, you're who you are when, you know, when you put your head on your pillow at night. So all this other stuff and, you know, it's really just who you are as a person. I've, I've always tried to, 
carry myself a, a certain way and, and be a certain type of person. I think there's a certain morality that was probably instilled in me at a young age. Now, I heard that you said you underestimated what it would be like to actually go through all the training. You yeah. really underestimated it. So can you kind of give me, I know people talk about, oh, pulling G's and this and that and the underwater, but can you give me a sense of like, at least at one moment, the moment you were like, oh my gosh, like this is, un I don't know if I can do this kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, there was, there's a training course that we had to pass in San Diego where they essentially blindfold you and strap you to a chair and then submerge you in water and then flip you upside down. And that, that's, I mean, just imagine that, like that is a pretty, that's a pretty unusual uh, situation to be in. Um, and then there, there were a couple of flying moments where, you know, we we're going into a canyon going 580 knots or 480 knots, 100 feet off the ground into a canyon, you know, and the, the walls are like, you know, maybe less than 100 feet off each wingtip. And so that was, that was pretty wild. Um, I love that your character doesn't sort of feel like he has to be too tough. There's a real uh -huh. vulnerability to it. Was, was that a choice you specifically made? Was it in the script? Was it through conversations with Tom and, and you know, producers and that? I think I just really, I just really felt for the kid. And I think that uh, when you really kind of start putting all the pieces together of, you know, what it must be like for him and knowing in the, you know, in the, in the back of your head, knowing how your, your father, you know, passed away and how things can go wrong up there real quick. I don't care how confident you are. There needs to be that, you know, there is that element of, you know, the mortality of it, right? Because yeah. it does happen to these, these guys. And especially, I think he, I think, yeah, there's a certain layer of doubt in himself that the character Rooster has that some of the other characters don't have. Um, 20 pounds of muscle you put on for this? Is that oh, correct? Oh, dude, I was, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I usually walk around, I think like 185. I was, at one point I was like 210 pounds and I was just, yeah, so just, yeah, big and yeah, tan. You have to eat so much. It's like hard, like to gain, like to gain that much. Well, you just have to eat so much, but. You're like tan, yeah. <laughs> tan. You gotta be tan. Dude. I'm kind of jealous it's of that top part. Gun. I spray tan. It's Top Gun. You gotta be. You gotta be tan. Oily. Yeah. At times, oily is a must for Top Gun. I think. How did you feel yeah. about that scene watching it back? Because I know you wor worked your butts off. <laughs> I think. That. I think you're just happy to, to, you know, because that that first scene was so iconic, and I think it, if anything, I'm I was just more like, I, I'm glad we're doing this as a film because I think the fans will. Uh, we'll enjoy that that we did that. That's one of the first things people have asked me. Is there a you know is there a volleyball scene? And I heard your friends are pissed that you're in this movie. They're so jealous. <laughs> That's getting some legs to it. I, I did say that, but it is. I just think they're they're just hoping that they're able to watch this movie that they want to watch so bad and that not be thrown off that uh you know that their buddy is is in it. So give us a peek behind the curtain of what the Wizard of Oz when you're got the the sound speaker going and you're pulling pranks and you're yeah. doing all this. How is Tom reacting? I feel like he loves you and he loves that you just don't care kind of thing. He, yeah, yeah, he yeah, he does. I mean, Tom he's you know, he I don't know. I mean, he's he's got a lot of extreme hobbies for sure, but he just loves making movies. You know, that's mm -hmm. really his number one hobby. It's his profession. He just he really loves he loves it. So I'm able to I don't know. I have fun when I'm on set. I'm having a great time. What do we have here? Yeah, here I thought we were special. Fellas, this here's Bagman. Hangman. Oh, whatever. What the hell kind of mission is this? I saw your Instagram. Can you start us off with a press tour? Oh, well, this is day two of the Top Gun Maverick <laughs> press tour. <laughs> and we don't get tired. That wow. was very good. Thank you for doing that. I'm going to ask you to perform one more time. Can you guys reenact your best G's face? Because in the trailer, we got to see all your G's faces. Can you do it right here, right now? You know, I usually don't do this on the second day. But yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking, I'm like... Are we doing it at the yeah. same time? Okay. Right, yeah, we have to do it at the same time. Yo, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to say pulling you're, G's. Okay. All right, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Are you going to oh, say here? We got to throttle yeah. up. All right. Pull. Pulling G's. Oh, stop. Oh, come on. You left us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm about to cramp. Yeah. 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 No, Did you honestly, just pull a muscle? Yeah. Huh. yeah. I started cramping. Tarzan. Oh, my God. That was Tarzan's going to need that some rehab amazing. after that G face. Yeah. Okay, so between the three of you, who has the best call sign? I think I do. Oh, can you please overlook over here? He's, he's looking at him. Tell me why yours Fan is boy. the best. 
Because I think it, it... And who you are and... Oh, um, so I am Greg Tarzan Davis and I play Coyote. Uh, and Coyote is the best because, I mean, do I have to explain something like that? It's, yeah, yeah I think you do. Because it sounds my like you don't even know the and I play fanboy and my name is just... A, anyone that watches this movie is going to relate to being a fanboy because it's a 10 out of 10 film. It is a perfect movie. It should be nominated for all the... Like, real. everything. So okay. That's it's just good. Like, you're going to sit in my... Yeah, you're just gonna visualize yourself in my under my helmet. He's okay, got you yeah. beat. He's got yeah. you beat, Glenn. Let's Look, I, I, I feel, <laughs> guys. I mean, there have been online polls, and Hangman has just smoked all of you. First off, yeah, but you, Hangman was the first. Was the original <laughs> Wordle? <laughs> it's a great game. <laughs> um, the Hang original Wordle, guys. Hangman was the original Wordle. Technically, I want to just start calling you Wordle now. Oh, don't call. Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be your new call sign. Oh no! <laughs> Wordle. Oh no! <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stick so with you good. for a second. Yes. How did you get your family in the film? Was it the bar scene? And where can fans find your family in this film when I they're going this. to watch? I love this, yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually had, I, I, you guys remember this, I probably had about 18 of my friends oh my and my family. It was the, uh, the second yes. time we were in the hardback, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He, and so he did all the, the whole, all the casting, all the extra casting. Back, uh, back I, got, I got pretty much all of my friends in flight yeah. suits uh, into this bar scene, but my dad, I went to craft services and came back and my dad was on all four monitors and I was like, oh no, like that's usually a bad sign if, you're, if your dad's like, who is this guy? And he uh, he found himself right behind Miles when Miles was playing Great Balls of Fire on the piano, which is just mm -hmm. such a great scene. Yeah. You will see the OG, we call him the original Glenn, right behind him and he is just, uh, and he smoked it. His, his performance is truly, it's gripping. Yeah. He brought so much energy Brooke to it. Yeah. It, was, it was authentic too, yeah. I, it just, For sure. He had a whole arc to uh, from yeah. the Yeah, it's a deep backstory. He did a lot of character <laughs> research. Mm. Um, who got, you got a ride home with Tom on the last day? Oh, oh so we, we did. So, did. But, so essentially, I, fin I got wrapped. I landed uh, from doing my final scene, landed in the F-18, we reviewed the footage. And then Tom was like, you two going to LA? And then we're like, yeah. yeah. And then he's like, all right, get, get your bags. So then from landing the F-18, then Tom piloted us back to mm -hmm. LA, uh, to, was it LAX? No, uh, uh, it was no, no, it's some private. Van Nuys, one yeah. Of the, yeah, one of the private ones, I can't. Yeah, I, that not was, LAX. That was but then <laughs> at that point we land, our cars are there waiting. We're like, what the hell was this? And then just Tom takes off on his motorcycle. Yeah. And we're Stop like, that's the, mo that's no. the, no. the bow tie. Movie. That's, that was my final day on Top Gun. We looked at that each other and it was so, like, are you I did not know that It was F-18 directly to the PJ and then he just rides away into the sunset. Can I just tell you my favorite thing that Tom does? It's it's the exit. His He does the Maverick exit every time I'll be talking him and he's like, all right, man, have a good night. Throw on the helmet, take <laughs> off into the night. And I'm like, damn, that's cool. And then the P-51, he'll literally oh, be like, yeah, yeah. all right, guys, great shooting day. And then take off in the P-51 into the sunset. We were doing like, like a slow-mo walk, like the first time in full flight gear. Yeah. And then we see that there's a, a plane in the distance. And just as it crosses through the sun, so you see its silhouette, like right in front of the sun. And you, it actually made the photos we took. He just, so he just, he just, he just winged up away. over the sun. He's like, yeah. the guy knows his angles. He knew the lens, <laughs> the lens was. It was unbelievable. What did he teach you guys about doing, like, first of all, hmm. did he teach you how to nail the one-liner? Because between, like, I want the truth, you complete me, all of that. He has so many iconic one-liners. I know this was somewhat like a film hmm. school for you guys. What did he teach you? You had, you had to work your own cameras about creating a blockbuster. He taught us about filmmaking, all, all like you said, about uh, camera angles, about lighting, about what the audience wants, uh, storytelling, you know? So we were able to really convey how this message will impact the mm -hmm. audience. And I think that shows on the f in, in the movie. Yeah, I think uh, blockbuster or not, I think what he brings to any film he does, I think it lends itself to, what, what he does lends itself to any type of movie he's making no matter the scale, if it's an indie or a blockbuster, or granted he doesn't make indies at this point. Um, <laughs> but I think it just, it's, I've taken it with me to indies and it's just a responsibility of giving your absolute all every mm -hmm. single moment you can and he leads by example from the first day we started on this movie. Speaking of great one-liners, like there's a couple of great mantras in this film, like don't think. What's each of your personal mantra in life? Do you have one? Yeah, I can get tired, because I can get tired. I knew that. I see you that. Is, that is. <laughs> Can I tell you, you really do live by that one. You're like the only person that actually has a mantra that says it constantly. And you don't just say it to yourself. <laughs> you say it to everyone. Oh, yeah. You don't know. Uh, yeah. you, don't know? you know, you got to back it up, too. So I don't know if I have a mantra. Do I have a mantra? Have you seen me say a mantra to myself in the corner or something? Have fun, man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> keep, keep it light. Dial have it. fun. I don't Dial know. It. <laughs> Dial it, baby. 
Okay, you lo- you won the last contest, but you did it. I did it. Yeah, that was awkward. I, 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 don't, I don't think I have a. <laughs> Mm, okay, let's talk about mantra. the oiling up of the beach scene then. Mm. That's a lot easier to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> to talk yeah, about. Let's talk so about I, male grooming. So I heard <laughs> that you guys shot it and then you all engorged on food and then you mm. had to reshoot the scene yes. like two weeks later. After that, we went and we had tater tots and hot sausage or hot dogs, uh, <laughs> hot hot dog wieners or something like that. And and <laughs> then they tell us we have, there's a rumor that, that we have to shoot it again. It's like, we just mm-hmm. put on so much weight in like two hours. What? Yeah, the, 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 the problem is the first the first movie, nobody knew that scene was going to be iconic. In this one, we were like, there was a drama. We <laughs> were like, all right, we knew this thing was coming. We knew the day. We're all, everybody's, there were guys eating protein paste. For t- <laughs> oh, my God. It was, it was bad. Like, you're just well, like. You came, you came out with the, the bands, too. Oh, the resistance, oh, the resistance, resistance bands on the beach. The bands on the beach. Yeah, there was, I mean, uh, what else was there? Yeah. There's some footage out there Ask that I'm Monica sure Ask we'll Monica to show later. you the footage of all of us just going crazy. She's just like, oh, my gosh, boys. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. This needs to be in an extended cut or something. Yeah, like we also have, we have some really fun videos uh, on the Carrier Gym too. Yes, yeah. We, we started doing video montages of working out, and it was just yeah. Oh, slow mo? Did you hit the slow mo? Always slow mo. Oh nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Nice. I have never worked out in fast mo. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, also during the prep, uh, there was he was he was preparing with his trainer, and I think it was maybe before we met. I'm not sure, but it was he had this this Instagram post that just said montages are forever. <laughs> you just see Glenn busting his tail, working out, and they just like it brought the severity of this, and I think that trickled down to everyone. Like, oh yeah. my god, yeah, montages yeah. are for. I love that you remember that. Yeah, the caption was so Sound iconic. Felt, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you reminded me so much of a nice man in this film. Did oh, you yeah. sort of study? Is that sort of was that the sort of the inspiration in a way, or did it just happen? And then for you, you have bragging rights because you're also in Mission Impossible. Mm. So I want to know about. The difference between a Top Gun film and Mission Impossible. You can go first. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I, I I tried to look. Val Kilmer's one of my favorite actors. You cannot top Val. He's iconic in his own mm-hmm. way. So you know, I I think you have to honor some of the things from the first one. And obviously, um, you know, there are things that the audience wants and certain prototypes the audience wants. But I tried to tried to make it my own as much as I could. You know, I wanted Hangman and Iceman to exist in their own mm-hmm. in their own worlds. Yeah, oh, Mission Mission Impossible 7, uh, they're the same, but they're different. I mean, Tom, he approaches each role and each project with the same intensity and, and, and the same level of stunts and everything and same level of quality, but it's it's also different because he always tries to outdo himself. And I told him, I said, when I saw Top Gun, I said, yo, how are you going to outdo Top Gun? And McHugh and, and Tom said, that's the goal. If we're not trying to strive to outdo it, then what are we doing it for? So, okay, yeah. one last, one last. Doing a Top Gun film, you know that when you watch the trailer or a featurette, you're going to be like, oh, I look so badass in that. What was your moment where you're like, oh, I'm a badass? That's my moment. <laughs> Those AG pulls that... Um, we do not look cool on those. <laughs> I think we look so cool. We look so distra- Like, we look, we're look, we going through We're, we're working. It. Yeah, I was like, our bodies are absolutely going through this. There's no girl I'm, in the world that looks at the Hick Maneuver face and no, goes, that's a cool honestly, face. Like, I, honestly, face after, I, after they sent us the free feature rent, I'd sent like a 10 minute voice memo to y'all to be like, yo, we look bad ass. Yeah, 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 the yeah, world yeah, is yeah. gonna <laughs> love it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think it looks so cool in that. I think we yeah, did. Yeah, 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 I'll tell you, my, my, my mantra, if we're gonna go with the mantra, it's voice, voice notes from Tarzan are the greatest coffee in the entire world. <laughs> He's about as hyped as anyone about life has ever seen. Also, he, he checks out all the interviews and then gives comments on them. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like, if anybody's sends, watching press, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he says yeah. like Glenn interviews. He's like, oh my god, check out this moment. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, we don't need to revisit this. Like, oh. I, I just yeah, yeah, love yeah. watching. I yeah. love them. When I'm not around them, I want to watch yeah. them. That's but all. You know what it is? You're a real wingman. That's what it is. You're you're a supporter of everybody. Yes, so. I am. Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they going to get to teach us? Congratulations on the best movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Hey. I swear, I wow. swear, Thank it's so you. good. But I'm sure everybody's saying this to you. Um, I did this with the other trio. I hope you'll indulge me. I usually don't ask people to perform, but they had a contest. Who can pull the best pulling G's face? Like reenact your pulling G's face right here, right now. Who won over there first? Uh, I feel like Glenn, Glenn might have won. Glenn. It's, a toss. It's, kind of a, it's kind of a loose skin thing. Can you use your hands? Yeah. Yes. You're going to win. OK. I have a lot of loose skin. On the count of three. Ready? <laughs> no, that's not fair. That's not He's pulling the do you don't, No, but you don't pull. Also, you my hair is like really up, you're not like up right there now. Like this. You don't have to mess up the hair. Don't mess it's up gonna, the hair. It's, it's OK, on the count of three. One at a time, do we all do it? One, two, three. 
<laughs> this is blackmail. This is blackmail that you have here. Yeah, what did you do? That's a gift. That's a future gift in the making. <laughs> Wait, wow. your eyes are commitment. I mean, he wins for commitment alone. <laughs> guys, come on. Wow. Eye drops. Wow. Eye drops. Somebody call the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was actually, you were actually, wow. well, you beat the other room. We'll say that. Obviously. Definitely Shit. beat the that other room. We could have told you. When Jay heard that Glenn was maybe the winner, he's like, all right, I'm going to step up. I'm going to give a full blown Broadway Thank you, performance. By the way, for indulging me, that was really fun. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, between each of you, who do you think has the best call sign? Are you why your character has the best call sign name? I think Bob has the best call sign. Yeah. Bob, and he yeah. just told yeah. us why two why? seconds ago. Yeah, if you throw me in the ocean, I'm Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna stick with that. You're gonna yeah. you're gonna really stick with that. I, I will. Love it. I mean, it's actually a part, I mean, as you know, a part of the film, you know, what does it stand for? We don't tell you. Oh yeah, I know, it's true. Yeah, yeah. there is. is an unknown it's little It's the kind secret. of call sign you could like make up a story every... No, he's sticking with Bobbin in the minutes. ocean. We're throwing him in the ocean. <laughs> That's gonna be part of this press run. Everyone's gonna watch him Bob. Do you remember in the, in the original script what it actually stands for though? Because it's something kind of really cool and, and you can't even really make But you know what? The world will never know that. I know what it stood that. for in the first script. The world will never know that. What is it? Nope. Um, That's a new film. <laughs> it changes. It changes That's true. by the day. Hey. It changes by the day. Yes, yeah. it's, it's um, a morphing. But payback and Phoenix are pretty cool too. So. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Why are yours the coolest? Well, I think the fun thing about our call signs is that we, at first, they were sort of given to us. Which yeah. the whole yeah. thing about call signs is like you do something embarrassing and then they call you that for the rest of your life. Um, and we had a very different experience with it. But then we sort of earned our call signs in these crazy ways. Um, Basically what happened is the very first time we were all together. Um, the first day. The first day that we were all together, we all went out. We were at an officer's club uh, in base. Fallon, Nevada. We were, you know, it's this very cultural trip where we were with the pilots and, um, you know. He took his phone, and as you know, you can't do this, um, put it on the bar top and forced him to pay or pay for everyone's drinks in the bar. Like 200 people. Which Lou oh, at that point had not spoken to anybody yet, so it was yeah. old. And so it literally, Lewis had spent this trip. We flew to Nevada together. We then drove for an hour and a half and Lou had not spoke to anybody not for any reason other than I was just like. He's shy. It was, was like shy. a five hour, so it was and Bob. And so I was like, Bob, I was like, what would Bob do? I think Bob would, what would Bob not do? say anything. I need that shirt. <laughs> so then I made, and then I paid him back ultimately, ish. We were like, you have yeah, to pay split. him back. Yeah. And we're like, haha. It took funny. a little bit of convincing, but we did. Yeah, and then, then did the next split. morning. I, I went pretty hard that night. And then the night. next morning, Monica rose from the ashes. Rose from the ashes. Am I wrong? Was that the night? Literally, we in the first the night we were together. The shower on. And this is how. So all our names were, all our names, all our call signs were already scripted. So when we read the script, they were already there. And Joe gave us the opportunity wow. to change them if we wanted to change them. And everyone was like, but we earned everyone wanted to like look at it and try to figure it out. And then we just realized that like literally our first night together, we all, all of us earned our calls, even Glenn. Yeah, yeah. I flooded my bathroom that night because I started the shower and then passed out on top of the bed and then woke <laughs> up and I had to like mop it up at four in the morning. There was a leak from the ceiling, so it looked like I peed in the trash can, which I didn't. Um, <laughs> and then still, the next day, nobody knew anything. She happened. rose from the ashes. Wow. Which one of the three of you, or all, all anybody who plays a pilot in this film, do you think is the most like a mini Tom that you could see in like twenty years is has gonna is gonna like have carried on the Mission Impossible like franchise and like who sort of like is the mini me of? I feel like everyone of has some part of him now. Um, I feel like everyone's taken, learned so much from him and taken those lessons on to the next projects they do. Like we all have such high standards for each other too. Like I expect the most out of these guys and every time, I mean, this has ramped up to maybe come out many times and every time we sort of have reunions and also we like hanging out. Um, every time we see each other, like we just get so excited about the projects that we're working on and like we just have such a shorthand about the level of specificity that we always want to bring mm -hmm. to everything we do and you know how how carefully we want to work mm -hmm. on the projects mm -hmm. and how passionate we feel about them and i think that is something that was really brought out in us especially by tom, by tom. Yeah. i mean he picked people who i think had that in them who he felt that from but then also 
really encouraged that part of us and and taught us how to be on set with that. And showed us a little bit of the magic, if, uh, of yeah. the magic, you know, behind, what's behind the curtain on his side and how he makes a film and develops character and develops story and shoots a film and, you and know, shoots stunts, shoots like stunts why a camera things. moves the certain way it does. And you start to realize, and again, like down to tiny little things, like the way a gunslinger stands. And like, that's what these guys are in the air. That's what these pilots are in the air. They're gunslingers, they're old school Western, like, you know, I'll be your Huckleberry. Val Kilmer, uh, gunslingers, you know what I mean? And like even down to little things like that. And then all of a sudden you realize like, oh, that's what makes his film so great. And you want to take that with you to whatever you do. Like you, you can't have that experience and then just show up at another, on another set and be like, ah, whatever. You just can't, right. like it's not in you anymore. Like you would now know that you have to give it your all. Wow, your family's in the Air Force? Yeah, you my have dad, my yeah. grandfathers, yeah. So did that, at all age you in sort of jumping into this or was this a completely like not what you expected? You know, so it's funny, my dad was a mechanic, so I grew and he he worked on 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 uh jets his his entire military career. So I grew up like if for any reason I was out of school because I was always in trouble. Um I spent a lot of time in his hangar while he was like working. And so I grew up like staring at jets all day long and always wanting to fly, but it was also so common. In, you know what I mean? That it just it just felt like, oh, this is just a, you know, it's just a part of the everyday thing. For me, it was like the little things of like coming onto a base every single day and like, you know, having to show your ID at the gate. And then like you go to a certain store to shop and then you go here to watch a movie. It was all those little things for me that kind of like really clicked back in and yeah. made me kind of go back to like these childhood experiences. Right. We went to a screening on the on the base of Top Gun and they had us like introduce yeah. the, the film and he was, that was a cool day. Geeked. You like were telling all of us. Yeah, I was so excited. That as a kid. Yeah. I love the relationship between both of your characters in this film because it feels very, like as much as this is about action, it feels very grounded. And you're both very unique characters. It's not maybe something you would expect to see in a Top Gun film. Can you kind of talk about how the two of you created that unique bond between yourselves. I mean, I, I feel like there's a lot of reality and truth to it. I mean, I definitely look up, look up and looked up to Monica while we were making it. And she was always like one of the best pilots along with Jay. Um, and, and so like, it was an honor to be able to like learn alongside her and she was able to give me, you know, tips and check in on me. And it was, it was so, <laughs> there is some reality and truth to, to Bob and Phoenix's relationship. Wow. They, they, we flew together. The first day we flew was in um, a Cessna together. So like right off the bat, I'm like flying Whoa. him in the back seat and, and vice versa, he, he flew me as well. I remember and like, being in the back seat and, and being like, he, well, wait, Mo Monica, you you have the you have the plane right now? Yeah, and You're like, I'm yeah. like, I think so. <laughs> um, so we just got like thrown into it right away. Um, so it was it was easy. It's funny. Originally in the script, our characters were supposed to have maybe more contention, yeah. and they threw that out pretty quickly because it was like, no, we like we like that they oh, like yeah. each other, um, and it and it works. There's still like the hurdle of me not maybe listening to you right away, and right, then yeah. and then and then we start to like defend each other in other scenes, and it's fun. Beach scene, you had to reshoot it. Mm -hmm. You thought yes. you your diet was over and then you had to reshoot it. How painful was that? And, and we come on, it peace. was an oil contest. Who won? Who used the most oil? Glenn. Who was the slipperiest? Glenn he was, was the, the slipperiest. most glistening. He would have slid off a stage. He, he would have gone, down, himself. A, he he was so gone down a slip and slide in like <laughs> he two seconds. injured yeah. himself that day. So slippery. Yeah. We, we So we shot the scene. We're, we've all been working out, we're running, we're dieting, everyone feels great, everyone looks good. Uh, originally we shoot that when we get when we go to shoot the scene, there's gonna be a shirts and skins team. Everyone loses it. Everyone's like, nah, I've been working way too hard. Like there's no way I can be shirts. Like that's no, he should be shirts. One guy like, almost absolutely cried. Not. There was only one shirt actually on that day. <laughs> was I. Yeah, one guy almost cried. <laughs> Joe finally folds and he's like, fine. If you guys all want to be shirts, be or be skins, be skins, whatever. So we we shoot the scene. We all feel great. It's a beautiful San Diego day. It's like the perfect golden sunset behind us. It's absolutely beautiful on the beach. 
Miles brings like a, a pack of beers. We all sit around and talk for a little bit. That night we decide to go out to a spot here in downtown. Uh, we order pizza, wings, beers, everybody's tater celebrating. Tots. Like we tater just had such a tater tots. tots. Yeah, everybody's celebrating because this we worked so hard for this scene. And then the next day, Tommy Harper comes to set and he tells us, we're going to have to reshoot that again in like a week or two. There was just some stuff that didn't work in there. So we're going to have to redo that. And everyone was like, I can't do this for another two weeks. Please don't make me go back to this. I don't want to do this. It, that became a running joke. Joe would be like, oh, yeah, we have to we have to do some reshoots. Yeah. And yeah. he's so serious. You're like, yeah. yeah. And, uh, he's and what are we reshooting? Uh, we just, we'll we'll, we'll let you guys know. We'll let you guys know what it is. And then we shot again post-Christmas yeah. time. Like yeah. post-Tom Cruise cake time. Long yeah. And I ate the whole thing myself. Wow. A lot well, of oil, though. There was Vaseline. Oil there was grapeseed oil. There was coconut oil, avocado oil, glycerin, water, chapstick, sunflower seed <laughs> oil. It was. It was I, this is no joke. There, everyone had. Everyone had was lathered in like at least two or three of these things at a time. Doing push-ups. Doing push-ups. <laughs> like running in the water, just trying to get wet, so it looks like sweat was dripping on us. It was. Avocado oil got me. <laughs> it's nice, you know, it's a high heat oil. You know what I mean? Those are your pilots. Anything happens to them. Smoke in the air, smoke in the air. You'll never forgive yourself. For Jennifer's request, the greatest movie experience I have ever had Amazing. in a theater. It really is. What was your reaction to seeing it more uh, importantly? I saw it, I saw it in that big theater. Um, with my family uh, who oh. were, but literally on the edge of their seats the whole time. My daughter, her knees were bouncing. <laughs> she was so excited. No, it's did so you, fun. Did your kids, had had they watched the original? Because they they're younger, original, right? Yeah, but yeah. they, I mean, obviously my daughter was born in 2011, but you know. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's a spectacle that has so much heart. It's so surprisingly emotional and moving, and you're so connected to the characters, and then those flying sequences. I think if you love the flying sequences in the original, this is just another level, you know, what they accomplished. It's incredible. You should be a movie critic, because that was Thanks. the perfect synopsis <laughs> for the film. It actually is true, and it ticks all the boxes, and I think... Uh, first of all, and I'm sure people are asking about this, I remember in the original, they're like, the Admiral's daughter and Tom Maverick's getting in trouble for, and that's Penny essentially Benjamin. Per Penny Benjamin, and that's yeah. your character. Um, when that film came out, if somebody had told you that reference, you're going to play her one day, what would you have said? I never would have thought that that was going to happen. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought it was such a smart thing, such a smart choice um, to make you know, to sort of bring in Penny Benjamin and then you can hit the ground running with the two of yes. them, you know, which is great for characters of their age, you know, at that point in their life, they have this history together. We know that they've had this history together. Um, I think it's, a, you know, it's a great place to start uh, their journey in this film. So then because I felt that history when I watched those scenes, how do you create that? What kind of conversations did you and Tom have in crafting that history? And what sort of a backstory did you create for her aside from the reference there's a lot of time that you had to fill in for yourself yeah we talked about you know the fact that they had sort of cycled through each other's lives at various points and um I thought a lot about you know why they were good for each other why they kept doing that you know and i think that you can feel that in the way she handles that unresolved business when he walks into the bar you know she has so much humor and playfulness, but you can feel her affection for him, for him and her kindness. And, um, you know, she's an independent woman. She adores him, but she's going to set her own boundaries. And she has her own adventures that she's going on. You know, she's every every bit the adventurer that he is. Um, yeah. So they're, they're a good match for one another, I think. Did you sort of create something for yourself? Because of watching it, I'm like... When you said a few things, so you, like you weren't letting him in fully in the first scene as a female, I was like, oh yeah, there's been moments where he's really, really hurt her. And it is kind of referenced in the film, but yeah. did you create those little scenarios for yourself yeah, in your head? Yeah, create those. It's always fun to do that and create, you know, the writers did an amazing job, I think, with the script. Um, 
But it's always, you know, as an actor, it's one of the things that I love, you know, sort of filling in the moments between and creating that backstory and um, making it as detailed as possible. It makes everything more specific. When it you're, does. You know, well, that came set. across in the, the fact that you are this bar owner. The bar scenes are so iconic in this film, and it continues to be iconic. And in, or in the last film and in this film it is just as iconic. I really felt your ownership of that bar. I felt that you had lived in that space, that you would spend some time there, this was your bar. But on the day, what does that look like? Like, was it a set? Was it an actual bar? They built that bar for the film. Uh, they built it on the beach. They did an incredible job with it. Um, and uh, people loved it so much. I think people in the local community were petitioning to have it stay <laughs> at the end of the film. I don't know where that landed. I'm pretty sure it's not there anymore. But um, yeah, they did an incredible job. What did it. you do for yourself to make it feel like that was yours? Did I spend a lot of time practicing that tap? You know, <laughs> you? pouring that beer. Spent a lot of time practicing pouring that beer. Yep. And, yep. and, and I think that's a big giveaway. You know. First, first beer I tried to pour from the tap, it was like it was not pretty. That was not that was not film worthy. It really pays off, I think, when you when you and and I know that's the way Tom works. I want to talk about again as a female the romantic scenes. What I love about it is that he, in the scenes that I've seen, he doesn't do a lot of love scenes or romantic right. scenes. He he seems like an old school romantic. Nothing salacious. It was really connected. How were those scenes for you in in filming? Like what sort of um, atmosphere did you create within you know as a couple yeah I felt like I, I it's not exploitative it's not like graphic it's just more about their connection and you know that sort of um, you know the emotion behind their coming together I think uh, more than anything so uh, I, th I I love the way they did it I was great you know it was a very different scene in the original I don't know if you remember that blue the blue scene, the backlit blue scene. I've uh, seen the We original talked Matrix. about the fact that we were not going there. This was going to be a different kind of, <laughs> different kind of moment. Um, more about their, you know, their emotional connection. And I love it. I love that you have the scene of them afterwards, you know, sort of laying in bed and talking and talking about their lives, and you understand their friendship and, um, and again, you know, their history, their long history together. So I know that Tom took you up in a plane. You have a fear of flying. And I'm wondering... I didn't admit that to him. I did not reveal that to him. He said, he talked about the scene, and I just said, that sounds great, Tom. <laughs> As you that do with Tom. That sounds great. As you do, because he's just so cool, and, you know, you try to be, like, a little bit cool. And I mean, who's cool next to Tom Cruise? I don't, I don't know. So when you face your fear, does it lessen the fear? Like, are you going up again, or are you like, no, no, no? Well, I always, I never stopped flying. I did go through a period where I, it definitely challenged me. Um, it, I found it quite stressful, um, but I worked on it, and I had actually conveniently decided like I was going to take it on before this movie came up. So this was more like the ultimate test of my work, confronting that fear. I did okay. After a couple hours, I was ready to land, but I did okay. But I honestly, I think that if it weren't Tom flying the plane, I'm not sure how it would have been, you know? I just have so much faith in him. He's so capable at just about everything that I've seen him do. And from, like, not planes, trains, and automobiles, but you also have your own boat in this, and yes. then he takes you on a motorcycle. So and I have a really cool car. And you have a really cool then car. And he has a really cool car. So how did you sort of craft the boating scenes? Did you sort of know what you I were took, doing? I took lessons. I took a lot of lessons um, to try and make it look like I knew what I was doing. I mean, that was a lot of boat to sail. Um, so I definitely had some help. Uh, and there was a lot of wind and waves. And uh, we shot it up in San Francisco. So I had assistance for sure. Um, but I did take a lot of lessons. I was taking, I live in New York City, so uh, in Brooklyn actually, and, and um, so I was sailing out of the marina there in New York Harbor, which is its own kind of treacherous. I know, because I yeah. used to live in New York. Yeah. 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 Um, and last question, um, I don't know how old, I know you were a working actress when the original came out. What was your connection, and probably people are asking me this, but what was your connection to the original? Did you have to sort of, have you seen it a million times? Did you sort of have I it have in you? I have seen it many times, yeah. Did you revisit it before sort of diving into this I did, this one? yeah. I, re I revisited it and um, watched it with the kids and watched it again recently. And um, yeah, I had seen it. I had seen it several times. And how has it changed for you now that you've 
that you've been in this film, when you go back to it now, it's really fun. It's really fun going back to it and kind of trying to let it sink in that I'm part of the sequel. Because I, th I think when you, you don't think about it in that way, when I was doing it, I approached it as, you know, you think about the work and the character and, you know, um, so I don't think of it in the in that larger sense of context, you know, I was so involved in what we were doing and what we were trying to accomplish that I wasn't sort of looking at it from that perspective. So Until it's you kind watch of fun. It with your it's family, kind of fun, and you're yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> you were here at the request of Admiral Kazansky, A.K.A. Iceman. He seems to think that you have something left to offer the Navy. What that is, I can't imagine. Just want to manage expectations. First of all, the reactions to this film have been so off the charts. I haven't heard a single like bad note. What is your reaction to the reaction to the film? Um, I mean, it's, a, it's obviously it's a it's a wonderful uh, experience to be involved with something that that is that is well liked. Uh, I've had it a few times in my career, and it's certainly better than the 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 opposite reaction. Um, but we were very proud of the film. You know, we I'd seen the movie for the first time in 2020. Yeah. Uh, in deep pandemic, we saw it, just the cast and I, and and we were sat, you know, 15 feet apart with masks on, and it was a very different experience than I think people are going to have going to the theaters mm -hmm. now, which is right. uh, very different. But we knew we had something special, and we knew we knew it when we were making it. I mean, this is a continuation of a story that's 30 years in the making, and and there aren't many things like that, and there aren't many things like that with a movie star like this. There's, there's very few guys that get to go above there the title, is. you know, and, and he's one, he's at the top of the list. You're so. like gazing into his eyes right now. I'm mesmerized it's, it's, even it's, now. Uh, it's easy to do. It's easy to get lost. Well, let's talk about those scenes that you have, because what I loved about it, uh, your character is not, he could have easily been this, like, over-the-top, one-note bad guy, and right. he's not. And the two of you had such an intense, great dynamic, but there was levity. There were moments of humor. I want to know, just because I want to peek behind the curtain at The Wizard of Oz, does he work differently than other actors when you're doing that kind of a dramatic scene? I know he's very in control. No, Tom is, you know, Tom is, is a very giving, very receptive human being. Yeah. And, and as an actor, he's the same way. And he's in, his enthusiasm is absolutely infectious. And he obviously cares so deeply about this story and this character and this world. And it was a tremendous honor to be invited into that world, for sure. Um, but also, it was it was fun. You know, part of the what you, how you describe the levity of it was that it was. I think my character understood that yes, he has to enforce the rules, and yes, he is responsible for the hundreds of millions and billions of dollars of equipment and this is and that's. But but also of lives. But also, he does understand that what Maverick brings to the table is undefinable in some ways, and so he has to kind of lean into that as well. And. Uh, these are like real life lessons. Sometimes you got to put your chips on the guy that you're not 100% sure about, but you just have a gut about, and that's that's the story of Maverick for sure. I want to know more about Cyclone. I feel like you sort of opened Pandora's box. I want to know if how much backstory did you create for your character? Because I feel like he has secrets. He has a life that, <laughs> on paper, you think it would be one thing, but actually it's something totally different. Well, stay tuned for 2024's <laughs> Top Gun Cyclone. I mean, it'll be exciting. No, uh, I, you know, I, I had a lot. You know, we, part of it was was playing a guy that is in charge of a lot of very um, expensive and, and, and important things. Not only just from a monetar monetary standpoint, but uh, part of it was, was when people's lives are in danger. And meeting guys that, that either are captains of aircraft carriers or run air bases that are basically tasked with putting people's lives at stake. Um, that's, a, that's a real you know, that'll keep you up at night, for sure. And so I think Cyclone is dealing with a lot of those things as well. And, uh, you know, obviously it's, also it's, you know, looking sharp and looking tan. But and is he blown off steam? I feel like he's also, there's gotta be a balance, right? Like, yeah, for sure, you know, <laughs> we just didn't get to see those things. I feel like he's in the bar scene somewhere in the back. <laughs> he's just in the, in the, he in waits, the way back. <laughs> he, waits for, he waits for everybody. So obviously you saw the original. I'm sure you had, a, you were a teenager when the movie yeah, came out. Yeah. Um, when you go, now that you've done this film, how does it change the way you look at the original? It's funny, you know, the original is, is very much of the 80s. Um, and Tony Scott 
an amazing director. Rest in peace. He's a, he did such a, a he made they made such a great movie. Jerry Bruckheimer and Don Simpson and everybody involved with that production. It was it was and deserves to be held in the esteem that mm -hmm. it that it is. And for many people, it was like that meant Hollywood for yeah. the longest time. And it inspired a generation of naval aviators. People joined the Navy because of that movie. Um, and so, yes, it does live in this kind of uh, place in our hearts, for sure. And uh, like I said, I think the movie strikes such a great balance of um, nostalgia for the original, and then the continuation of, of the story is is just a real um, is a real pleasure on, on a couple different levels. Did you have aviation envy? Were you at all jealous <laughs> that you didn't pull G's and get... No. Uh, <laughs> you I'll, were totally I'll, the, fine the, with the, that. The, the simple answer is no. I, uh, you know, there was a little bit sure it would have been a fun experience to do that, but I was so glad I did not have to do, you know, the months and months and months of training that those guys had to do. Um, and I'm so pleased for, for, for all of them actually, because, because the, the proof is in the pudding and you, and you really do see on screen broadcast at 50 feet high, how their dedication to that craft. It was amazing. So you have the rare privilege of you've met Mom Cruise, not Tom Cruise, <laughs> Mom Cruise. How did that meeting go and was that the first time you met Tom? Um, I, I guess that might have been the first time that I met Tom. That was years and years ago. It was at Jimmy Kimmel's house. He had a bunch of people over to watch football on a Sunday. And someone said, you know, Tom Cruise is coming over. And we were like, yeah, right. That's not going to happen. And these are grown men. Like we're all, walk, you know, sitting around watching football, you know, and eating food and, and bullshitting. And, uh, knock on the door and who walks in but Tom Cruise with his mom and we, we literally were all just like gobsmacked like we're, this is how is this happening and hey guys are you watching football <laughs> yeah what's up Tom Cruise how you doing uh, so yeah that was years and years ago but um, I had since met Tom on a, on a few other occasions and uh, he is a very friendly and approachable guy it's uh, it's it's a rare thing for a, a, a movie star that has been a movie star for going on four decades to be that regular and approachable. And how's mom? And his mom's lovely. She just chill and just yeah, like... his mom is lovely. <laughs> um, I mean, you're, you're talking, I mean, it's amazing that you're talking about Tom Lake because you've had such an incredible, you are having an incredible career with so many memorable, like you said, memorable roles, great roles. Where does sort of this fit into the pantheon in terms of your experience as an actor? I mean, it's right up there. I, it's, I, I, I've, I've, I'll say I've truly never been involved with something like this at this level. I've done wow. my share of movies and I've been on television shows and I've had my fair share of accolades and, and whatnot. But this is a very different um, experience, um, even just even just the like kind of uh, experience of doing the press for it. I knew that this was going to be, you know, from San Diego, we have the premiere here, then we go to Mexico City, then we go back to LA, then we go to London and Cannes and London and New York. And, and, and that's just me. The rest of the team goes around the world. And it's, it's a very different level and it's a very exciting level. Um, and I'm, I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. I'm, I'm, trying to keep my eyes and ears open and really take it all in. I feel like a lot of the roles, and none of the roles you've chosen have been similar, but you, they always have an edge, like whether it's Bridesmaids, he had an edge, we'll just say <laughs> yeah. that. Whether it's Mad Men, whether it's this. Are these att roles attracted to you, or are you attracted to these types of roles? Because when I used to do a little bit of acting, and I got so t like I was cast for things that are opposite to who I am. Do you feel that way? Uh, sometimes. I think I, I, I'm... I'm it, tremendously uh, fortunate in my career, and I, I will be the first one to say it. But I'm also uh, excited to do the things that I get to do. And uh, uh, yeah, you know, the, finding the the layers of, of the character is is the is the most fun uh, uh, part of of the, of the process. So I'm glad I get to keep doing it. What the hell? Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. And we're off. Um, both of you really ground the film. Literally, you're both on the ground, but also you sort of have the dramatic, some of the most, more dramatic scenes, but also with like a tinge of humor. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, you kind of opened the film in a sense. Yeah. Like that was the scene where I was like, okay, I don't know how this movie's gonna be, and that set the tone. Did yeah. you kind of, where in the filming process, did you shoot that scene? Mm -hmm. Was it towards the beginning? Because I could feel the tension. You know, uh, and this is not even trying to sound facetious, 
Uh, I don't remember. It's all a blur. <laughs> it, was it was so a long much time fun. Ago. I just know I woke I woke up every day, ready for a new adventure. But I will say, um, every day, and I'm sure you would agree, every day we go to set, it feels like your first day because there's so much excitement and anticipation. You know, luckily we have Tom, who really you know works hard to make us feel um, as appreciated as and and he's very thoughtful. You know, about yes. saying, hey, we're really all in this together. We all need to shine. We all need to do well. But that scene was. Uh, particularly exciting to shoot. Um, I got to work with Ed Harris, come on. Uh, you know, and it just allowed us to really, you know, we knew it was early in the movie and we were really right. eager to set an exciting tone for the film and I think we did. It really did because that tension and you're kind of like, does Maverick still have it all these years later yeah. and, you really, and you really felt it. Your mm -hmm. character um, is sort of on the other side of the team. You're, you're, you know, you're both on different sides of the team. You work more for John Hamm's character or with John, John Hamm's character. Can you talk about building that dynamic with both John and with Tom on set. I want to know all the magic. Like we hear how magical Tom is, but I want I want details. <laughs> well, I had to kind of dance a fine line between Cyclone John Hamm and Maverick, and I kind of helped Maverick along his path while still keeping my duties in order and I am an admiral, so there's certain a certain path I have to follow, but I try to help him as much as I can. So I feel like I'm Maverick's behavior interpreter. So he does wild and crazy stuff, and I bring it down and put it in English so that Cyclone can understand it, and I'm trying to bring them together so that Maverick can complete the mission that I know he's capable of completing, but Cyclone is having his issues with it. Well, that's what I like about the film, too. There's nobody that's purely bad, and nobody, like, it's not cliche yeah. in any way. I feel like this was a perfect script. Like 36 years in the making mm -hmm. and worth it, or 34, however many it was. Mm -hmm. But for you as actors, you've both been acting a long time. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about, as a viewer, this sets itself apart from anything I've seen, but as an actor, how does it set itself apart from anything you've acted in? There's only going to be one sequel to Top Gun for the rest of time. Now, there may, you know, who knows what the future will hold, but in, in terms of that original, I mean, what I mean specifically is in terms of the movie that follows that original, there can only be one. And so to get the chance to be a part of that, I had to pinch myself. I thought when I got the phone call, somebody was pranking me. I said, you know what, you need to hang up this phone right now. This is not a nice thing to do to somebody. And hang on, you know, oh, no, this is real. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. I was just testing you, I'm kidding, I'll be there. Guys, come on, just, just, just joshing. Um, but, you know, I think we were aware uh, of the weight that the movie had. I mean, the original Top Gun is so interwoven in the fabric of American life. I mean, it's like up there with baseball and apple pie. And I think the wow. fact that it took many decades for the sequel to come is a testament to the filmmakers and Tom's insistence that they do something special and they do something that it's in, its, in itself original. You know, we're not yeah. just remaking the original movie. This is a whole new movie. And I think audiences are going to be floored. Yeah, for, um, for you, and uh, you're the only room that I'm going to ask this in because you'll probably get it asked a lot, and you both are old enough to remember the original. I loved the original. Mm. I have such a deep connection with it. What was your connection with the original film? Did you have to sort of go back, or were you like, I've seen this a million times, I don't need to see this again. I know where we're at. <laughs> it's It was a little bit of both, because I have seen it a million times, and it's one of those things you stop on whenever you're passing it on TV. Yeah but I still had to take like a concentrated look at it and then try to think of the things that are gonna connect that movie with our movie. So, um, and then watching it, you get more and more excited because the more I'm watching the original Top Gun, I keep thinking, I'm gonna be in the next one. I'm gonna be in the next one. I'm watching this. I used to sit in the theater and just chew popcorn and think, man, I'd love to be in a movie like that. And it's like, I'm gonna be in a movie like that. You know? uh, so that feeling overwhelms you for a while. And then you get to work and you meet Tom and he's all energy. He's right there looking you in the eye and he greets everybody every morning with good morning, how are you, good morning. He's happy to be there every day. Mm -hmm. So you get caught up in the energy and the enthusiasm of the film and then you forget about feeling like pressure or anything like that because now you're, right. you're going. And I don't know when you saw it, but my theater exploded and called for the film to be played again after it ended. <laughs> Everyone was like, again, again, we'll sit through it again. And I'm sure you've seen the reaction. Mm -hmm. What is your reaction to the reactions that are out there? And what was your reaction watching the film for the first time? You know, I feel like, you know, Tom Cruise, uh, he knows how to make a good movie. Um, and I think part of that is, is even in, you know, working with him, you know, he's constantly 
talking about audience. He's aware that mm. people work hard and they spend their harder money to come mm. watch us on screen. How do we reward that? How do we make sure that when people show up that we give them what they deserve? And that's really important to him. I almost sometimes in my, in my brain think of it as like designing the perfect roller coaster, right? Got to have the right dips and turns at the right place. And so to see the audience reaction, to see that borne out, to see the passion that the filmmakers had to make this movie, I was so happy. There's a couple of amazing mantras in this film. Mm -hmm. One of them is like, don't think, just mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. Do either of you have a mantra in life? As an actor, my mantra would be, tell the truth and all will be well. Mm. As, a, as an actor, my mantra is, uh, read the script before you go to set. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you got your lines down. One of those days before you show up to shoot, just. Find the time. <laughs> Take a read. Look at the words. Look right. at the words. You're working on, you finished Mission Impossible? Uh, seven, yes. Yes, I've finished my work on seven. What is the difference? Like, how is the difference working on that film versus Top Gun? Tom being the common thread, but what is sort of a different, how is it the vibe different? Well, the way that uh, Mission Impossible is being made is a little more um, free flowing from day to day and oh. decisions are being made kind of with uh, moving parts kind of all going and you kind of make decisions based on what's in front of you whereas I feel like Top Gun had more of a plan and things had to be separated like the flying and the training for the flying and then the ground crew so um, I guess Top Gun's a little more structured right now than, okay. than my experience of Mission Impossible 7. Both uh, totally energetic, both aimed to please mm. and exhilarate the audience, though. That's the common thread. Now, did I read that Tom was a fan of South, South Side? Let me and tell you about like Tom Cruise. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be brief with this, because people don't understand. You know, there's a certain thing called Hollywood speak. And in Hollywood speak, somebody goes like, hey, I love you, and that just means nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, you know, you hear it all the time. You hear when people read scripts. So we're on set. Tom and I talked a lot about Chicago. He shot movies there, and I mentioned that I was doing a, a show there. He's like, oh, I want to see it, I want to see it. I was like, okay, this is, he's so busy, he doesn't want to actually see it. No, no, he emailed me, he's like, yo, what's up? <laughs> he said you were going to send me the show. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, dude, uh, Tom Cruise, let me send it to you. Send it to him, and a couple months later, we were in the writer room. I get a phone call from Tom. He has watched the whole season. He is pitching me the jokes he liked. He is talking about the characters he loved. He said, the writing is so crisp. And I said, Tom, you know, I'm in the writer room right now. He's like, well, can I talk to the writers? So then, of course, I have the great pleasure in my life of being able to go, hey, uh, guys, you guys, uh, Tom Cruise wants to talk to you. Putting him on speakerphone. No way. <laughs> just gushing their faces. They were over the moon. But it's so nice, you know, um, in a world where folks kind of just say things to say them, to actually have someone who's genuine and who really means it. And Tom is that guy. Well, last question for both of you. Your real life call sign. If you mm. had a call sign in life, what would it be? <sighs> Miami. Miami. Oh, I feel you on that. Yeah, yeah. You got a little Miami Vice happening That's right, right there. <laughs> mine would <laughs> <laughs> Mine would be uh Wheatberry. Wheatberry. Why yeah, I wheatberry? I like that. What's that about? Cuz I bake. I'm oh. a sourdough bread baker. Mm. <laughs> you said that like an admiral or a general. I bake. <laughs> End scene. No turning back now. Come on. Any fun yet? I'm sure you've seen some of the reactions. Some people have seen it already. What is your reaction to reading the response, the overwhelmingly positive response to this film? Well, you know, I, I was at CinemaCon last week, so I got I to there. sit with 3,000 people uh, and experience it for the first time with an audience finished. And uh, it was just, I was relieved, you know, I was nervous. Um, I was just happy to see, you know, a lot of the humor landed because yeah. that's the kind of stuff that you kind of forget as you're watching the movie and working on it over and over but to see all those beats land to see you know people really respond to what Tom did in this movie and the performance he brings to it um, you know he really gets a chance to act in this film which is really exciting yeah. and, and uh, so I'm just I'm just so proud of the whole cast and everyone that worked on it. Well, that's what's so amazing about it is it hits drama, comedy, action. There's so much woven into one. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you I was at CinemaCon if you heard us in the balcony calling for it to be played again oh, after it ended. No, but that was the reaction. People wanted to see it again. Oh, good. Right the well, way. Well, I hope people do. Yeah. I think they will. Yeah. I think there's going to be a, a lot of uh, repeat viewings. Um, 
I heard you say that you wanted to make a film when you're approaching something as huge as Top Gun that has such a legacy, that really it came down to making something for yourself that you love and that you would want to see. Can you sort of talk about that a little bit? Is that sort of what grounded you, even in a film about aviation, and grounded you as a director in yeah. tackling this thing? No, I think as a director you have to you have to make it for yourself because if you try to please everyone else, you'll get pulled in a thousand different directions. So for me, you know, it was going back to the feeling I had as a 12-year-old kid seeing it in you know May 1986 on the big screen and capturing that feeling uh, again. Um, obviously, having Tom and Jerry Bruckheimer next to me while making it was incredible because they were, you know, part of the original. And um, so, yeah, you have to make it for yourself and then hope that it connects, you know, when it comes out. It definitely connects. Um, you work with Tom and Oblivion. What is it like approaching material that's new versus sacred ground? Well, this is, you know, this is one of the jewels, if not the biggest jewel in his crown, right? I yeah. mean, this is Top Gun. And uh, from the very beginning, Tom said to me, he's like, this is hitting a bullet with a bullet. Like, this is going to be, this is going to be tough. This is going to be hard. Two miracles. Two, yeah, it's going to take two miracles, yeah. Uh, and uh, so every day, you know, we just pushed ourselves to make sure that we were telling the best version we possibly could. And, yeah. um, you know, uh, it was, it, was, it was an adventure every day. I'm sure for you as a director too, when you're working with Tom who knows this material so well, he knows what he wants, he's a visionary himself. Yeah. Can you give me a little, just a little taste of behind the scenes, what that partnership and that collaboration is like? Is he as inspiring as it seems he would be? Yeah, he, you know, wakes up thinking about the film, you know, and goes to sleep, probably dreams about it. Like he's just in it and it's inspiring to me, it's inspiring to everyone on the crew. Um, you know, it was, it's a partnership when you're working with him. I mean, look at the film, look at what he's doing, you know. He's, he's not only interested in what his character's doing, but he's interested in all facets of the filmmaking process. Um, he's made movies for 35 years, you know, and worked with all of my heroes in terms of directors, so um, I, just, I just learned a tremendous amount from him. I hate to ask, but what, what, is, what was one thing he taught you that you didn't know? Oh my gosh, I mean, it's so many things. Uh, you know, what Tom talks about is communicating with the audience, and sometimes the thing that you want a scene to communicate, even though you see it, sometimes the audience doesn't get it. So it's really important. I think what he really taught me was, um, in those test previews, really listening to what the audience is saying mm -hmm. and make sure they're seeing mm -hmm. the same thing you are in a scene, and, and learning how to use those previews to, to hone the movie, I think was, was a really good lesson. So as a director, I want to talk about the Rialto camera. Is that what yeah. it was called? Yeah. The shooting in 6K, having six cameras in and around the planes. Yeah. Um, and these cameras are, were created specifically for this film? This was the first time they were used. They're made by Sony. It's called the Sony Venice, and the Rialto is the version that splits into two pieces. So it makes it kind of half size. Uh, and that's the, the camera that allowed us to get six in the cockpit. Okay. Um, so it took us about 15 months working with the Navy to figure out how to do it and to get clearance to do it because they, you know, if the pilot needs to eject or there's an emergency, the cameras can't interfere with any of the systems. Um, so it was a huge engineering exercise, but, um, you know, when you see what we were able to capture, you just can't fake that. So 16, four, 12 to 16 hour days for 30 to 45 seconds of footage. What thing, one thing I found was astounding was how you connected story to action. I yep. can't imagine how difficult that was to have all that footage. Are you gonna do anything with that, any of that extra footage? Will we see extended cuts of any scenes or additional scenes? You might see some additional scenes. Um, there, would, there isn't a lot on the cutting room floor in terms of scenes. Um, uh, definitely the behind the scenes videos that we've created to tell how we made the film are pretty epic. I think there's six or seven like half hour pieces we put together that'll be available. Um, so there'll be plenty of material for people to see how we made it. Any chance of a trilogy? Have you thought? Oh my God. Is it we're possible? Just, I know, I know you just put this out. to bed, but you know we have to ask because we want more now. I know. Well, Would you be open to it? 35 years to make this one, you know, let's see, in 35 years I'll be in my... <laughs> you know, 80s, uh, you know, we'll see. I don't think we can wait that long. Yeah. But would you be open to it? You know, if we could find the right story, I mean, again, it's like it took five years just to get this one out. It's hard to wow. imagine diving in right away, but, yeah. you know, it's all about the story. Um, were you there? I heard Ridley Scott 
brother of the late Tony Scott watched yes. the film. Um, were you there with him? And no, what was Jerry, his reaction? Jerry, you know, Jerry and Tony were very, very close, made a lot of movies together. So Jerry and Ridley have history. They watched it together. Uh, and Jerry called me right after and said Ridley loved wow. it. And that just, that meant a lot. And I'm going to end with a bang. Any of the explosions practical or were they CG? There are, there are some practical explosions in the movie. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah.